then uh, we can uh, start just, um, if you want Andreas to um, share your uh, stream already so I can just add it directly and then introduce you. Okay, I can, sh can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. All right, okay. Uh, let's share my screen then. Share and then this is my presentation. C can you see it? Yes. Uh, so we are set. Okay, we will okay. Yes, we're uh, gonna start in uh, about two seconds. <laughs> okay. Uh, see. Okay, so we can go on um, with our next speaker, which is Andreas Verdu from Cyprus. Um, Andreas holds a um, Bachelor of Science from in Environmental Sciences and a Master of Science in Applied Geoinformatics and Environmental uh, Risk Management. Uh, they're both from the University of Dijen, uh, Greece, and he works as a research fellow at the Cyprus University of Technology and as a GIS uh, specialist in several NGOs. He's also involved in numerous uh, European uh, life and uh, national research uh, programs uh, in the GIS and remote sensing uh, spatial analysis and data analytics fields. And his research interests focus uh, and are not limited uh, on object oriented uh, programming, uh, the use of remote sensing and spatial statistics for monitoring uh, and understanding um, environmental problems. Uh, he has also been involved in thematic cartography, spatial modeling, data management, um, uh, development of decision support systems and tools. And he's also a board member of uh, QGIS Cyprus. Andres, uh, thank you for being uh, here and presenting. So I'm gonna let you. Uh, I'm let you. I'm gonna let you present right now. So um, you 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 can start. Okay. Uh, thank you, Christine, for your introduction. Uh, so my presentation deals with the design uh, and development of a um, GIS-based platform uh, for monitoring and maintenance and management of road net network, network of Cyprus uh, using an uh, open source component. Uh, so this is the outline of my presentation where I will make uh, an introduction about um, the need uh, of such systems and tools on transportation. Uh, I will uh, proceed with a brief uh, description of the scope uh, of the project and our methodology approach. Uh, I will present you uh, the results and the benefits of the developed uh, uh, applications. And finally, um, I will list uh, some major findings and future recommendations. So uh, transportation plays a vital role uh, in the economic progress, sustainable development, and of course, urban prosperity of societies. Uh, GIS uh, technologies consist uh, of a fundamental tool for transportation, especially for applications related to route planning, uh, maintenance, uh, asset management, and decision support, uh, thus to the development of any intelligent transport uh, system. So the integration of multiple functionalities uh, within one environment um, has caused organizations uh, related to transportation to adapt uh, GIS technologies within uh, their uh, workflow. Uh, furthermore, the adoption of the methodologies of, for monitoring transportation networks uh, or optimization of maintaining transport related infrastructure uh, from a geographical perspective uh, is crucial uh, to, to deploy or utilize resources efficiently and uh, cost effectively. Uh, under this uh, perspective, the main objective of my presentation is to describe you a, a complete geographical uh, information-based system 
uh, as developed for the needs of the public sector of Cyprus, which is the main operator of the road infrastructure of Cyprus. Uh, so the, um, the proposed framework uh, comprises a combination of open source components uh, for the, de the design and implementation uh, of the platform. Uh, actually, this work is based on a research uh, collaboration um, on intelligent transport systems between Kios Research and Innovation Center of Excellence uh, in collaboration with the Public uh, Works Department of Cyprus, which is under the Ministry of Transport Communication and Works. So uh, GNOSIS uh, is the acronym of the developed NGIS uh, platform. Um, uh, the acronym stands for, for the Geographic Information System for Intelligent Transport System. Uh, which the main idea is to uh, collect, uh, store, manage, and disseminate any data regarding the local uh, transport network. Uh, to do so, uh, actually, for, a for the development uh, for any information system, uh, the methodology approach must be formalized uh, to implement the system development uh, life cycle. Uh, there are many uh, system development methodologies, and we choose to use a hybrid format of uh, agile and waterfall methodology, uh, integrating that way the best elements uh, of both models into the software development practices. Uh, from one side, the waterfall development methodology was used for the system uh, specifications analysis, where analysts and users uh, proceed sequentially from one step to one phase to the other phase. And for the development uh, of the main functions uh, of the system, the Agile uh, model has been used, uh, which is uh, an iterative process. Uh, every iteration has a complete software package, uh, which will then fit it to the main system. Uh, that includes any requirement analysis, uh, architecture, uh, planning and design, coding, development, and test and documentation. Uh, in addition, uh, the methodological framework based uh, on some uh, international standards for the system uh, architecture uh, and life cycle of the project. Uh, here we can see the system archi architecture of the, the the system architecture model of the developed platform, uh, um, which involves a coherence of uh, several subsystems. Uh, in level one, here refers uh, to any external data sources that configured, um, transform, and loaded to a database, database server here. Uh, which is based on PostgreSQL. In level three, um, we can see it referring to application server, uh, which communicates the data to the end user via, um, via front end of the applications. Uh, the geo server uh, was introduced to manage the data uh, stored in uh, the spatial database and to provide the final image visualized uh, to the end user. In addition, the Django um, web framework uh, was utilized uh, for the web server backend development and for the authentication service. Uh, level four refers to user uh, identification and management uh, from which um, access is given to the respective users. And uh, finally, uh, on level five, uh, all the three components of the developed system uh, are grouped, uh, where I will focus mainly uh, on the desktop version and the mobile application. Uh, the desktop version is developed mainly to store, analyze, manage, and disseminate uh, any data regarding the local transport network. Uh, QGIS open source software was chosen as a highly suitable uh, platform for the development and application of the desktop version. Uh, QGIS, uh, as is well known, integrates uh, very effectively with other open source uh, 
and JS packages and provides a Python uh, application program interface, uh, which is used to expand uh, its functionality in one hand and efficiently exploit the capabilities um, of the system. Uh, in the other hand, the mobile uh, application uh, was developed uh, for data collection uh, on the field uh, using uh, smart mobile devices. Uh, the mo mobile application is integrated with the desktop version uh, in the terms of uh, data viewing, task management, and follow-up. Uh, the open source Ionic framework was adapted uh, as an emerging approach to proffer solutions to the cross-platform mobile application development and an integration with Angular um, uh, application design framework also utilized. Uh, this uh, hybrid approach on the development allows a single code-based work uh, for different platforms. So uh, proceeding to some results and benefits, uh, starting from the desktop application, uh, the user phase uh, of QJS was uh, divided into panels for each of its core functions uh, of the system, uh, such as uh, map canvas, map navigation, layers, and tools. Uh, the Gnosis bar menu uh, has been added uh, where all the developed functionalities uh, were grouped uh, to easily be accessed uh, from the authorized uh, users. Uh, more specific about the 100 specialized functions, uh, that's the so-called QGIS plugins, uh, were developed to assist the everyday workflow of public works department employees covering a wide range of applications. Uh, through the desktop version, the user can prepare any reports, produce thematic maps through preset layouts uh, that we have created, and access to a volume of over 10 gigabytes of data, query on them, and access in more than 50 unique data sets. Uh, in addition, the desktop version um, integrates with the mobile application uh, for assigning tasks um, and monitoring their, monitoring their progress uh, for PWD field uh, working teams. On the other hand, through the mobile application, uh, users can access their everyday tasks and navigate through the map to identify um, the respect special allocation of them. Uh, the status of the tasks can be changed on progress, on hold, on, or finished uh, according to the completion level and can be monitored uh, from the supervisor through the desktop version. Any data relevant to static information of the road network, such as um, traffic signs or the condition of the road network can be collected and stored to database can be collected in the form uh, of nodes or uh, geolocated uh, pictures from the mobile device. So, uh, concluding now, uh, um, among the major findings of this project, uh, which can be summarized in some key points, uh, it's, uh, it's first that the um, developed system uh, consists in a very good example uh, of how different tools and open source components uh, can be integrated, uh, providing a complete solution for collecting, storing, uh, managing, analyzing, and disseminating geographical information data. Uh, open source software provides great benefits. Uh, uh, in addition, another key point is that the implementation uh, of all the data in a single spatial database uh, linked to a dynamic usage and the representation of, of spatial information from the entire orga organization. Um, from this stand, uh, standpoint, um, the dissemination of spatial information within the public uh, works department improves the internal, internal procedures uh, on data usage, uh, usage, exploitation, data production, storage, 
and thus to produce quality uh, data. Uh, also, it provides opportunities for the users uh, to understand the important role of geovisualization, uh, to harmonize a large amount of data, share knowledge about the special features uh, regarding the local road network, and reduce uh, the cooperation gap within the department. Uh, the user friendliness uh, of the developed application is considered as a strength. Um, as internal procedures and needs were made smoother and faster, increasing uh, in the same time both productivity uh, and accountability of the department. Uh, as for the public works department, this is a uh, step towards achieving their goals uh, of the European data strategy by using GIS technologies uh, to take reliable and accurate decisions related to road network monitoring, maintenance, and management. A further key point is um, there is no need for supplementary software for processing and analyzing, analyzing data. Uh, all pre-processing or post-processing can be taken under the umbrella of QGIS, uh, which also provides the chance uh, to develop tailored uh, applications. Uh, nevertheless, it must be highlighted uh, that the success of the developed platform relies on the employees of public works department commitment and involvement. Uh, trying to adapt this platform or their everyday workflow uh, along, along with the, any support on training materials and workshops the system will significantly grow uh, within the organization. Uh, given the portals now um, uh, for further improvement and support of the entire system, uh, the following future, future recommendations uh, should be taken into consideration. Um, further improvement is uh, needed in performance uh, for both desktop and mobile application uh, of the developed platform, um, the system now must, must uh, support new capabilities and functionalities coming up from the needs of the public works department, uh, upgrading at the same time the overall, overall performance of the system and their reliability. Uh, moreover, the concept uh, of big data has been also examined uh, as new challenges appear in multi-processing, analyzing, archiving, sharing, transferring, and processing uh, of large data sets, data sets uh, across organizations in the public uh, sector. Uh, according to previous uh, research as well, the public sector uh, can significantly um, boost productivity uh, by actively using um, big data uh, as they can address many internal uh, problems such as enhancing efficient, efficiency and productivity, transparency uh, and well-being. Finally, uh, no, no, it's not finally yet. Internet of Things should be also introduced to the public sector as expected to have um, great potential in terms uh, of both economic and social values. Uh, and finally, uh, an in-depth uh, exploration of how artificial intelligence methods can be employed to solve uh, any uh, solve and optimize uh, complicated uh, problems. Uh, potential models can focus on the enhancement of the existing public transportation network, uh, on the design of the expansion of the network, or safety management. Uh, well, thank you for your attention. That was my presentation. I hope you are here with me. <laughs> we are still here with you. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, it's been a really interesting topic. Uh, and um, I'm sure that uh, this will spark a lot of discussion. Um, we still have... Uh, a bit of delay on the on Vanulas, so um, I'm hoping that questions will uh, pass um, 
afterwards. Yep, there's a, there is a question. Oh, <laughs> um, as I work in the transport sector as well, is there a way to get your PowerPoint? <laughs> basically? Of course, yes. <laughs> uh, please send me an email and we can share it with you. Of course. Um, so for whoever wants to uh, contact Andreas, I took the liberty to uh, share his contact here. Um, and uh, I think we can uh, discuss afterwards uh, as well. Um, okay. There seem to be no other questions though. Uh, but um, it seems that other other attendees will send you direct messages. <laughs> so maybe uh, there's a little bit of shyness in asking questions. Um, anyway, I would like to thank you for uh, for your presentation, for uh, taking the time um, to be here, um, and I hope you you will have uh, a phosphor G that uh, that uh, stands to, up to to what you're looking at uh, looking for. So um, thank you very much for being thank here with us. I'm gonna you. pass. Oh, no, there's a sorry. There's a, one more question. Uh, is there a versioning in your uh, GI as well? Yes, we use the latest released uh, version, uh, the latest long term release, the, the most stable. It's now 3.18, I'm correct. Three point sixteen. Yes, this, this is the latest release, uh, uh, stable version. I think. All right. Maybe we can uh, wait for one more minute. See if anybody okay. else wants to <laughs> to contribute. Yes, we still have questions coming. Um, is the data being made available uh, publicly or it can be licensed for commercial use? The data and the... Um, okay, this is another topic. This, um, we are planning to do... Um, we are planning and designing to do the national access point of Cyprus and all this data will be available for free from there. But I don't have any um, uh, date announced yet but yes well uh, we're planning to uh, give an access free access on this data in the future all right um. Okay, so it's, uh, it uh, was a question of versioning of the data. Um, what happens if you receive new data as an example? If you will receive new data, how easily to... Uh, I didn't get the question. Come again, please. I think the pr previous question is um, uh, about the versioning, the one about the versioning of your uh, GI. Um, is, uh, is related to versioning of data, not the GI itself. The versioning of the data, not the, the QGIS version. And what do you mean with the um, term version of the data mm -hmm. or the kind of data we use? You mean shape files or rasters? So our speaker uh, asks, uh, our uh, uh, attendee asks, um, if you receive new data, uh, what happens to the version, um, as an example? Uh, okay, okay. Our um, database is very flexible to add new data on it. We have a group of scientists that is working to the transformation of data and uh, add them to the database. This is actually how it works now. We, do, we, are, we, are, we are in a transition mode uh, handling the whole system, the public works department with the university. So in this stage, we uh, transform transforming the data and analyze the data first before entering the main database.
Um, I'm not sure. Um, maybe this, this <laughs> your answer answers the question, but um, Ricardo, um, our attendee that uh, is asking the question, is going to contact you separately. Please, yes, yes, please. No problem. I think you can sort this uh, um, much, much better if you communicate directly. No problem. No problem. Um, let's, uh, let's wait, um, of course, for more questions. If uh, you want to, to post any other questions, um, Right. It seems that so far that this was the, the query session. Um, but yes, I encourage everybody to contact directly um, to network over the platform um, and uh, basically uh, get the conversation going uh, after this session. Thank you so much, Andres. Uh, I hope you can have a good post for tea and uh, see you around in Venice. See you. We're going to wait for another five minutes to introduce our uh, new speaker, um, just to keep the schedule uh, running at the normal times. So uh, if you're interested in our uh, new talk from uh, Jessica uh, Moyle um, about the vector analytical framework for population modeling, uh, please tune in in about uh, five minutes, less than five minutes.